But you gotta tell me, what is this thing? I got it all. <laughs> <laughs> I got it all. So the, those are, let's see, we're gonna spend the whole time talking about this. So those, uh, there, are, there are actually different points during intercourse, or not even intercourse, during sex, engagement in sex, um, that people can sometimes have headaches. And sometimes they're orgasmic headaches, so right at the point of orgasm, and sometimes they're what we call postcoital, so they happen right after. Um, these kinds of headaches are actually really scary for more than one reason. The, the biggest reason that they're scary is because they tend to be what we call a thunderclap headache. They're very explosive. They happen, bam. You feel like your head is exploding in an instant, and you think you're having an aneurysm. And in fact, I think you're having an aneurysm too, because that's what an aneurysm sometimes presents like. So sex headaches, um, are, they're, they're also, there's a benign exertional headache that can sometimes present, which just happens with exercise. Um, but, so the key for that is to make sure you don't have an aneurysm, basically. And there's a couple of other things. There are other more elaborate diagnostic things we sometimes need to do to make sure that there's nothing else going on. And then we go, okay, these are prim a primary headache disorder, the, the sex headache. So those, those often respond to indomethacin, too. So what we can do is you take indomethacin right before you have a little nookie in. I thought you, I thought you were going to say, that's the, no, I can't have sex. <laughs> People are often really afraid. That's one of the things people are like, no, I mean, and they're even afraid to take the medicine. We've done all the tests. They're afraid to take the medicine and, and go ahead. And, and by the way, they usually go away after a period of several weeks to several months. So, okay. Now we can move on maybe. So this is just what I was telling you. This, this, this is just migraine attention. There are actually multiple different types of, so there's migraine with aura, migraine without aura, probable migraine. There's a bunch of different, this is just one of the diagnostic criteria under migraine. It's so thick, this, this list. You can't, you can't even read it. I, I didn't, it wasn't intended for you guys to read so much as it was to see that there are lots of, oh, this doesn't have, yeah, see, it has two of the following and at least one of the following. Unilateral location. It doesn't have to be, right? It only needs two of those. So it can be both sides. And in fact, in a good percent, like, 30 or 40 percent of migraine migraineurs have bilateral headaches. They're on both sides of the head. So you can't use that to diagnose migraine as some doctors might go, oh, well, it's on both sides of your head and it's not pulsating. Then it's, then it's not a migraine, right? No, wrong. Because you can have a bilateral headache that's achy, but if it's moderate to severe in pain intensity and aggravated by routine activity, you've got those two criteria covered for migraine. Now all you need is to add in some, some nausea and some sensitivity light like noise, and you've got yourself a migraine without any unilateral location, without any pulsating, and without any vomiting as well. So, and it looks like a, just a bad tension type headache to some people. Um, next. So it, it's complicated, and you need to have the right. So this is just, this is cluster headaches. I told you before, cluster headaches are pretty unique types of headaches, um, and since we don't have anybody here suffering from them all, Kind of skip over that. Very short lasting. They tend to occur in men. They have they have very unique features. They occur in the middle of the night, and they're bad. And that's a picture of somebody having one. They're they're thought to be so the that's most. What I look like when I get <laughs> 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 so you have not, the eye. You notice the tearing of the eye. I don't get the, the tearing. Nose. I get this side blinded. Like oh I'm, yeah. I, I hold. I can't see on this side. Yeah. So that's on this side. That's that's coming from the brain. The, the tearing and the and the runny nose are coming from. Remember, I told you that autonomic mm -hmm. nervous system that, that creates those changes. And cluster headache always has autonomic features associated with it. Um, and it's thought to be the most painful type of headache, in, you know, in existence. Next uh, treatment. So you know, I guess this is kind of where I'm gonna. Maybe not end up, but. There are two, there are a couple of ways that you can kind of think about migraine treatment. There are ways to abort an attack, and then there are ways to prevent attacks. Okay, so a prevent, I'm mean, sorry, an aborted is something that helps you relieve the pain of the current, and, and, and you know, nausea and stuff, of the current symptoms you're having with that attack. And preventative helps decrease the frequency and severity of, attack, of future attacks, right? So the abortives, the over-the-counter medications, Advil, Tylenol, et cetera, et cetera, triptans, those are the Imitrex and Massol, some of those medications you might have heard of. Um, Painkillers, which are really generally not effective and not that's recommended. Right. And, and yeah, they really, sometimes they take the edge off and make you feel like you're doing I took a morphine. It helped you sleep or something. Yeah, they're not very good. Um, I left off this list, I don't know how, um, 
nausea medicines, which have actually been shown to be better analgesic, better migraine abortive medications than, um, than the narcotics. Um, nerve blocks can sometimes be done, like an occipital nerve block, which is an injection in the back of the head, can sometimes stop a migraine. Um, and other kinds of headaches, things like hydration. So keeping yourself well hydrated, especially before you exercise, can be very helpful, but you, during a migraine or before. Um, different foods or beverages may help. Just like I said, the Coke or the cup of coffee actually may be helpful in some people to abort their migraine. And there are some people who actually find some foods. One of them might be chocolate. A lot of people, uh, including many headache specialists, I'm, I'm uh, in a, uh, maybe about half, I think maybe half headache specialists think it's a trigger. Chocolate is a trigger for migraines. And about half think it's not a trigger, but it's what we call a prodromal symptom. So you crave chocolate, you eat it, and then you have a migraine, but it didn't trigger the migraine. It was actually your body's attempt uh, of, of treating it before it actually came on. You know what that's very interesting phenomenon. Before I get one, like let's say the night before, I'm so hungry. That's a prodrome. So perfect. So one of the phases of migraine that is rarely talked about, one of the reasons we don't talk about it, I don't know, there's no good reason, is because, um, so the prodrome is the phase that occurs before the headache um, and before the aura, if you have an aura, and it occurs anywhere from a few hours to say 24 hours or so before the migraine attack comes. Um, not everybody is aware of it, or maybe not everybody even has one, but generally the symptoms of a prodrome tend to be very subtle, so things like fatigue, maybe a little sensitivity to light, different food cravings, um, stuff like that. can so, so you might not even notice that you're having prodromal symptoms. Then some people get an aura, which is usually most commonly visual symptoms. It can be the zigzag lines, flashing lights, loss of vision can be one of them. I get the tingles. And you can get tingling, you can also get weakness. And then comes the headache. And then comes what we call the post which is the hangover, which is a part of the migraine resolution. Is it normal, though, to have a migraine, let's say, for 40 straight? Because I saw yes. somewhere it said 72 hours. 4 to 72 hours is the diagnostic criteria for a typical migraine attack. Um, many, so after 72 hours, we tend to call that status migranosis. So status migranosis is when you have a migraine and it's not going away. Because <laughs> my worst one ever was once, it lasted four days straight. Yeah. Yeah, so it that, that really would officially bad. be status migranosis. Um, I have, but the odd thing But it never I, happened again, thank God. Yeah, well that's really, but there are ways to treat it though. Um, but there are some people whose average, whose typical migraines actually last five days or a week. So the, the criteria are meant to establish migraine as a disorder. You can have variations on it throughout your life. But so as long as you have five attacks that fill that, then they would say you have it. And then that one attack was just a prolonged migraine or status migranosis. And then there are treatments for it. If, if you called and needed something because it wasn't going away, there are specific treatments. And then there Hospitalize are- Hospitalize me. <laughs> no, there are things you can do at home. There are things we can knock me out. That's okay. <laughs> steroids is actually the number one treatment. A short burst of steroids, like three days, knock it out. But.